Hi friends, welcome back to Edipedia World. Last class we discussed about thermionic emission in details. Today we will continue our discussion on thermionic emission by seeing a practical application of thermionic emission. The practical application that we will see is cathode ray tube. We will understand what a cathode ray tube is, what is the construction of a cathode ray tube and how exactly does it work what is the utility of thermionic emission in a cathode ray tube and then we'll conclude by seeing some uses of cathode ray tube. So let's get started. Today we'll see one of the applications of thermionic emission uh, and the application that we'll see is cathode ray tube. So we'll basically understand what is the construction of the cathode ray tube and how exactly does this work? Now broadly speaking, cathode ray tube can be distributed into three segments. The first segment is known as the electron gun. So an electron gun consists of a filament, a cathode, a grid and some anodes which are uh, for focusing and accelerating purposes. Then we have what are known as deflecting plates. So this segment of the cathode ray tube is known as uh, is for the purpose of deflection. There is vertical deflection plate and horizontal deflection plate. And finally at the end we have the fluorescent screen where exactly the image is actually formed. Okay. We will see each part one by one. So let's begin with the electron gun side. Okay. In the electron gun, we have a filament over here which is connected to a low tension battery which is around uh, 6 volt mostly. Now this filament gets heated up and it heats the cathode over here. So basically the cathode is heated indirectly, okay? Now this heated cathode which is made out of a material which is good thermionic emitter will go reach high temperatures and as a result this cathode will start to emit electrons, okay? Now this cathode em emitting electrons which are negatively charged and this anodes are positive charges uh, connected to positive terminal of a battery. These are normally high tension and around uh, 1000 volt. Around 1000 volt, both of them. Okay, so what they do is the first uh, anodes purpose is basically to focus the electrons which are coming. So the electrons might be dispersed in different direction. So this anode basically focuses it in a streamlined um, method and also since it is at high potential it attracts the electron and increases the speed of the electron. The second anode is exclusively to accelerate the electrons. So the purposes of the anodes are one to focus the electrons and two to accelerate the electron increase the speed of the electron. Now you might have noticed that there is something uh, intermediately which is known as grid. Now the grid is uh, normally charged negative or it might be charged at 0 volt. So it is normally between 0 to minus 20 volt. The purpose of the grid is to one it uh, catches pushes away stray electrons only the electrons which are going inside this region will be able to pass okay so this also helps in focusing second since we can control the voltage supply of the grid this leads to either more electrons being passing if we maintain it at 0 volt or less electrons passing if we maintain it at minus 20 volt or minus 10 volt thereby by regulating the voltage supply of the grid we can regulate how much electron we are actually allowing to pass. Thereby, the number of electrons passing changes and that will result in a different brightness 
of the impacted electrons on the screen. You will see that. So to conclude, the purpose of anode is to focus and accelerate. Purpose of the grid is to control the amount of electrons flowing. Purpose of the cathode is to generate the electrons and purpose of the filament is to heat the cathode. Okay. Now to increase the number of electrons, we can either increase the temperature of the cathode or we can reduce the voltage uh, that is bring the voltage of the grid at zero uh, volts. This is the electron gun part. Second part is the deflection plate part. Now what does the deflection plates do is basically the electrons are coming in a straight path here. The deflection plates helps in deciding which way the electron will ultimately go and strike the screen. This vertical deflection plates moves the electron either upwards or downwards depending on which plate is uh, positively charged and which plate is negatively charged and the horizontal deflection plate moves the electrons either towards the left or the right. So these two in combination will be able to focus the electrons at any position on the screen, right? Because this can uh, change the up and down movement and this can change the right and left movement. Thereby we can fine tune where the electrons is going to strike the screen. This seems like a simple concept. Now the vertical deflection plates can either use electric potential or a magnetic field to move the electrons, to deflect the electrons. Let us see each of them individually. First, the electron, uh, rather electric field. And second is magnetic field. For the electric field, what will happen? Suppose I need the electron to move downwards rather than the central point. I need to move it downwards. What I will do is I will apply a positive uh, potential to this plate and negative potential to this plate. Thereby, an electric field will be generated and the electrons will be pushed towards the positive terminal. So it will bend towards it and thereby it will move downwards okay now how much bending will take place will depend on how much potential difference is applied between them thereby we can exactly fine tune how much we where do we want to strike the electron on the surface of the screen so this basically does a up down uh, movement of the electron we might need to move it left and right the electron so if we need to move it towards the right that is towards this plate then we will positively charge this plate and negatively charge that plate uh, rather uh, put this to positive terminal here and uh, negative potential here thereby the electrons will move towards this and vice versa so using these two combination of potential and electric field we can exactly pinpoint where on the screen will the electron strike Second uh, concept, this was the first way to deflect electrons. Second way to deflect electrons will be using a magnetic field. Instead of uh, electric potential being applied, potential difference being applied, we can use a shoe mag a hot shoe magnet or a strong electromagnet to provide a magnetic field. And as we have already discussed that uh, a moving charge, moving charge in a magnetic field has a force experience known as the Lorentz force. So by exactly fine tuning which direction the magnetic field is applied, we can fine tune which way the Lorentz force will be applied. Thereby we can deflect the electron wherever we want on the screen. Okay, so this is the concept of deflection plates. Now final segment is our screen. The screen is known as fluorescent screen and uh, let me write it. 
fluorescent screen so what is a fluorescent screen a fluorescent screen is basically a screen which has a different material applied to the surface what material a fluorescent material like zinc sulfide or zinc silicate which are fluorescent so what happens is when the electron strike suppose the electron is bent in such a way that the final electron strike takes place here since the electron strikes here the material here being fluorescent will lead to fluorescence here and a bright spot will be generated here so wherever the electron will strike a uh, bright spot will be generated on the screen the screen being fluorescent okay now we can manipulate the electric field or the magnetic field and how much potential we apply here thereby controlling the number of electrons striking the screen and the locations where the electrons will striking will strike the screen thereby we can change the brightness appearing on the screen as well as the pattern that is appearing on the screen right so by uh, tailoring my potentials on the grid my potential on the anode my temperature of the filament the electric field or the magnetic field here i can produce different patterns of different brightness on the screen that is how basically a cathode ray tube works okay now what are the simple uses of a cathode ray tube one of the very simple use uh, in the day to day life is a tv screen in the past now we have changed to leds kind of screen but uh, in the past the television screen was mainly made out of cathode ray tubes so that was a practical application of cathode ray with tube which you can see in your household okay then there are a lot of uses in the experimental or the scientific community in order to measure different signals you can specify different uh, unknown potentials at uh, different anodes and keep one of the anodes fixed rather all the other parameters fixed and we can find the nature of the signal being applied okay because that is the only variable and that will lead to different uh, brightness at different positions in the screen so these are kind of uh, practical applications of a cathode ray tube i hope you got a picture of cathode ray tube and how thermionic emission is put to practical use in a cathode ray tube with this i will conclude today's lecture and the next lecture we will start to understand uh, radioactivity and build some foundation to basically go in depth for radioactivity till the next class have a great day goodbye